What if events went differently and Mubaka defeated T'Challa for the throne in Black Panther? Welcome back, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, to another intriguing what if scenario. Today, we're exploring a pivotal moment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where Mubaka, the fierce leader, emerges victorious in the challenge of the throne of Wakanda. Imagine a universe where Mubaka's strength and resolve leads him to become the new Black Panther and ruler of Wakanda. How would this leadership shape the future of Wakanda and its role in the world? Would his approach to govern and defense alter the nation's alliances and conflicts? Or would he uphold the traditions and values that T'Challa championed? Let's dive into a world where Mubaka claims the throne and see how this alternate scenario reshapes the destiny of Wakanda and its people. But before we embark on this thought-provoking journey, if you enjoy exploring the infinity and the possibilities of the multiverse, consider supporting my work on Patreon and Substack. Your support allows me to, to create more content, dive deeper into all these different what-if scenarios and really start creating more. Thank you for being part of this adventure, and let's explore the powerful twists of this fascinating what if together. Location The Sacred Waterfall, Wakanda. The time has arrived. All the clans of Wakanda are assembled at the top of the Sacred Waterfall. The thrashing of the drums sends shockwaves rippling through the pool of water at the top of the falls. The rhythmic war cries of each clan compete to fill the air in a melodic conflict. A. Battleground as old as time itself awaits the glorious combat between Mabaku and T'Challa. There can only be one king of Wakanda, and it will be at this place amidst these holy waters that blood shall be shed in order to decide who wears the crown. T'Challa is still mourning the loss of his beloved father. His wounds are fresh, and his heart is heavy. T'Challa embraces Shuri, and she tells him that she knows that he is the rightful king of Wakanda, and believes he will be victorious in battle. T'Challa says that he will make their father proud and honor his memory, no matter what, at the other end. Of the pool, Mabaku is surrounded by his most trusted Jabari warriors who chant his name in a repetitive rumble. Mabaku grabs one of his warriors by the back of the neck and pulls them closer so that he can whisper something in their ear. Don't miss, he says. The warrior looks determinedly into Mabaku's eyes and nods comprehensively. The Elder Zuri slowly walks into the water and takes center stage. Zuri raises his staff and instantly the drums and chanting come to a unified stop on the same beat, almost, as if they had been part of the same war cry. T'Challa and M'Baku take their positions on the battleground at the waterfall's edge and put on their wooden clan masks. T'Challa wears the panther, while Mabaku wears the mythical white gorilla. The clans wait in burning anticipation for the fighting to begin. Besides the crashing of the waterfall, there's complete silence. T'Challa and M'Baku lock eyes and begin to circle. One another, Mabaku charges at T'Challa and swings his club at him, but T'Challa manages to narrowly evade the attack. The roar of the crowd and the beat of the drums thunder. Back into action, T'Challa and M'Baku trade blow for blow. It's hard to tell who the greater warrior is so early into the contest. The power of M'Baku set against the agility. 
and skill of T'Challa makes for a thrilling contest. M'Baku lands a devastating blow to the head of T'Challa, smashing his panther mask to pieces and sending him crashing into the pool of water. Blood streams from T'Challa's head and mixes with the water that is beginning to turn red. T'Challa shakes off the dizziness, then springs back onto his feet and launches an attack at M'Baku. T'Challa lands a furious combination of a punches, elbows, and kicks to his opponent. M'Baku is rattled by the onslaught and seems to be losing control of the fight. T'Challa smashes M'Baku's mask to pieces with a spinning head kick, sending blood spraying from M'Baku's mouth. The warrior that M'Baku whispered instructions to before the battle began is watching anxiously. The warrior looks around to see that all eyes are on the fight. The warrior cautiously raises a small flute to his mouth and shoots out a tiny dart that hits T'Challa in the leg. T'Challa feels nothing and closes in on M'Baku to finish him off. All of a sudden, T'Challa stumbles as he starts to lose his vision. M'Baku glances at the Jabari warrior who shot the dart, and he nods in affirmation of his deed, sensing that his moment has arisen. M'Baku finds the strength to get back to his feet and takes advantage of the disoriented T'Challa. M'Baku begins to violently beat T'Challa, who can hardly see, thanks to the poison dart in his leg. T'Challa is in serious trouble he can't defend himself against the powerful M'Baku in his state. M'Baku lifts T'Challa above his head and slams him down onto his knee. T'Challa's bloodied body lies motionless in the shallow pool. M'Baku retrieves his club and stands over T'Challa. M'Baku raises the club high into the air, preparing to hammer down on his competitor. But before he can deal the final blow, Shuri comes rushing in and throws her body over her brothers. Enough! She exclaims. M'Baku drops his club and celebrates his victory with his clan by beating his fists against his chest like a gorilla. The remaining spectators look desperately for signs of life in T'Challa. M'Baku, what's happened to the great and powerful T'Challa? Do you need your little sister to protect you now? You're no fit for the crown of Wakanda. The elder Zuri joins Shuri and tells her that they must take T'Challa to get medical. Attention immediately if they are to save his life. Location, Elder Zuri's cave, Wakanda. High up in the cliffs overlooking Wakanda, Zuri and Shuri are tending to T'Challa's. Wounds inside of the elder's cave. Inside the cave, there are counters stacked with potions, and traditional Wakandan medicines. T'Challa has gashes all over his body, and he is still unconscious. Shuri uses some of her advanced Wakandan technology to scan. T'Challa's skeletal structure for breaks, and picks up that he has spinal damage. M'Baku's back-breaking maneuverer fractured some of T'Challa's vertebrae. Zuri tends to T'Challa's gashes lathering the wounds and healing clay. Location, M'Baku's palace, Wakanda. Meanwhile, at M'Baku's palace, M'Baku is being crowned as the new king of Wakanda. There is a large audience present for the crowning of the new king. One of M'Baku's trusted warriors places this crown on his head. M'Baku stands to address his followers. M'Baku, for too long, Wakanda and her people have changed their ways to accommodate technological advancements. We must return to our naturalistic state and discard the influence of modern science. No more robots and spacecrafts we are. Wakandans and we will not adopt the ways of the outside world. The new Wakanda is here. Mabaku's followers in the audience cheer with joy, but there are many in the audience.
who look dismayed at the announcement to discard of their technological assets. There are many who are frightened about the turmoil that Mabaku's reign could bring. Location, Dr. Doom's secret base, Latveria. Dr. Doom's mask is hovering in midair, concealed behind its glass enclosure. The enclosure opens, and we see the metallic hands of Dr. Doom reach in to retrieve his headpiece. From behind, we see the villain place his mask beneath his green hood. Dr. Doom's trusted humanoid robot, Rebecca, approaches him. Rebecca. Everything is prepared, Mr. Doom. Dr. Doom walks up to a large steel door, and it opens automatically. Behind the door, we see an army of dormant robotic soldiers. The soldiers are molded from steel and have a robust human-like shape with faces that resemble Doom's mask. They are all equipped with pulse blasters. Electricity starts to buzz between Dr. Doom's fingers, forming an orb of electromagnetic energy. Doom raises his arms above his head and shoots the electromagnetic energy outward. Doom's army awakens in their blasters, charge up with power. Location, Elder Zuri's cave, Wakanda. T'Challa is being monitored by Shuri. She has brought in some of her highly advanced medical tech to aid in her brother's recovery. Shuri calls Zuri to come and take a look at something that she's found. One of Shuri's devices has picked up the poison that was used to weaken T'Challa in combat. Zuri and Shuri realize that there has been foul play on the behalf of Mabaku, and they agree that they must bring this to the attention of the Wakandan court. Shuri leaves for Mabaku's palace with evidence of his crime. Location, Mbaku's palace, Wakanda. Mabaku and his followers are enjoying a massive feast in the palace hall. There is music and dancing and spirits are high. Mabaku is devouring a large leg of lamb and drinking. Ale from a rhino horn. He is recounting his great victory over T'Challa. Mabaku's tail is interrupted by a strange hissing sound. Shuri has snuck into the palace without being seen by any of the guards. She hears the sound. A circle of firecracker-like sparks appears in the center of the hall as a portal starts to open, drawing everyone's attention. Semi-inebriated warriors jump up from their seats and stand ready to meet whatever or whoever comes through the portal. Dr. Doom steps out of the portal. The warriors immediately launch into action, but Doom effortlessly fends them off by using his mystical powers to turn their weapons into sand and then using a force blast to knock them all off their feet simultaneously. Mabaku stands up from his throne and stumbles over his words. Mabaku, who are you and why are you here? Dr. Doom, such a shame I was looking forward to a challenge. I'm not often surprised, but this is going to be much easier than anticipated. This is not the formidable Wakanda I have heard whispers of. Mabaku attempts to attack Dr. Doom, but he is no match for the supervillain. Doom makes light work of Mabaku, while his robotic army march out of the portal form behind him. Mabaku's people watch in fear as Dr. Doom's army storm the palace, and Baku has been defeated. He crawls on his knees and begs for his life, but Dr. Doom deals his final blow and kills Mabaku by shooting him in the back with a blaster from his armor. Dr. Doom slowly walks up to Mabaku's throne and takes a seat and gestures to his army to proceed. The robot soldiers begin rounding up the Wakandan guests as hostages. Shuri manages to escape unseen and rushes back to Zuri. Location, Elder Zuri's cave, Wakanda. Shuri arrives back at the cave and tells Zuri what she has just witnessed. Suddenly, Shuri's medical tech starts to beep as T'Challa regains consciousness. They rush over, 
to T'Challa's bed as his eyes start flutter open. They are overjoyed. It is a miracle that they have managed to save T'Challa considering his injuries, but by fusing ancient Wakandan medicine and modern technological advancement, they have achieved the impossible. T'Challa manages to whisper something to his sister. T'Challa, get Tony Stark. Shuri holds her brother's head in her hands and pleads with him to rest and recover. She looks at Zuri, who is still in awe of what's happened. Shuri tells Zuri to keep watch over T'Challa while she goes to find the one they call Iron Man. Location, the Great Mound, Vibranium Mines, Wakanda. Deep underneath Mount Bashenga and the Great Vibranium Mines, Doctor Doom watches over as his army of robotic soldiers force the Wakandan people to mine large amounts of vibranium. The Wakandans appear weak and dismayed, as if they have lost all hope. Rebecca tells Doom that their mining operation is near completion, and soon they will have enough vibranium to build his superweapon. Dr. Doom tells Rebecca that once, the weapon is complete, they will be able to achieve world domination. All the powers of the world will bow to his strength and he will create one pure government to rule all of mankind with himself as supreme leader. Anyone who opposes will be obliterated. Location, Stark Tower, New York City. Tony Stark is busy making modifications to his suit when Jarvis tells him that there is someone here to see him. Tony tells Jarvis that he doesn't have any meetings scheduled and Jarvis says that this person managed to hack into his server and schedule a meeting remotely. Tony's interest is piqued as he was under the impression that his system was impenetrable. Tony agrees to let the person enter and he stands by in anticipation. Shuri enters Stark's workshop. Tony tells Shuri that he is impressed with her efforts, but not entirely surprised considering all the innovative developments in Wakanda that have been at the hands of her genius. He is a fan of her work and a little jealous of her intellect. Shuri tells Stark about Mabaku's betrayal and that Doctor Doom has taken over Wakanda. She knows that he is after Wakanda's vibranium. Stark agrees that Doom is definitely using the vibranium and he can only suspect that the evil Mamster Mind is using it for some kind of weapon of mass destruction. Tony looks at his suit and thinks for a moment before saying that they may need some more muscle for the job and tells Shuri that he has a close friend with just the right temperament for this kind of a fight. Shuri says that they better move quickly because Doom is already inside of the mines. Tony tells Jarvis to send up his jet and within seconds it appears outside the window of his penthouse workshop. The glass doors of the workshop slide open and they enter the jet. Location, Bruce Banner's laboratory, Uncount. Bruce Banner is in his lab running some tests. Tony introduces Bruce to Shuri and informs him of the situation. Bruce is reluctant at first saying that he has been at peace for some time now and does not want to let the Hulk take over again. Shuri pleads with Bruce telling him how her people have been enslaved and how the weapon that Dr. Doom is building could mean an all-out world war. Bruce realizes that he has no choice and agrees to join the battle. Location, the Great Mound, Vibranium Mines, Wakanda. Dr. Doom is assembling his weapon of mass destruction. The weapon appears to be part satellite, part laser beam, and is as large as a stadium. Doom is using his power to control machinery to assemble the weapon using only his mind. Massive parts of a vibranium enforced steel float in midair and fit into place around a core of vibranium ore. Location, Zuri's Cave, Wakanda. T'Challa is now fully conscious and sitting upright. 
Zuri helps him detach from all of Ashuri's medical gear. T'Challa gets to his feet and tries to walk, but stumbles. He is still, very weak. T'Challa is not certain he has the strength necessary for the battle that lies. Ahead, and he feels like he has failed his people. Zuri tells T'Challa that it is not over, yet, and that he must find the strength from Withton to do what is necessary. Zuri brings. T'Challa a potion and tells him that he must visit the ancestors in order to gain their guidance. T'Challa limps out of the cave and looks over to Wakanda in the distance. He sits down on the cliff and takes the potion from Zuri and drinks it. Almost immediately his eyes roll back in his head and he falls backwards onto his back and starts hallucinating. T'Challa wakes up in the spirit world. The sky is painted in deep shades of purple and pink, and the long grass seems to float in the air as if gravity does not exist. T'Challa walks up to a large baobab tree to find a group of black panthers perched in the tree. One of the panthers walks along a wide branch and approaches T'Challa slowly. The whole panther begins to speak, and T'Challa immediately recognizes his father's voice. T'Challa falls to his knees in reverence. T'Chaka tells his son that the greatest battle of his life awaits him, and that he is the only hope of the Wakandan people. He must defeat Doctor Doom and return Wakanda to its former glory. T'Challa feels that he is not worthy for the mantle of the Black Panther after his failure to defeat Mabaku, but his father tells him that he has been given the chance to show his people who their true leader is. T'Challa does not know how he will find the strength to confront his enemy, but T'Chaka tells him that he will have the spirit of all the Black Panthers before him pulsing through his veins the other panthers. Stand up and T'Chaka tells his son to rise up. T'Challa rises and the panthers roar. Simultaneously their eyes glowing purple as roar. We see T'Challa's veins widen under his skin and we can see them glowing purple. T'Challa's eyes turn purple too and he starts to scream out loud and soon his scream turns into a roar. The Black Panther has returned. T'Challa wakes up screaming in the real world to find Banner, Stark, Zuri, and Shuri all watching him with wide eyes. Stark welcomes him back and Shuri embraces her brother with a tight hug. T'Challa Full lock robot soldiers are Stark's will. Shuri break into her lab and retrieve his suit. Then Location, the Great Mound, Vibranium Mines, Wakanda. The final compartments of the weapon lock into place. Doctor Doom uses his masterful sorcery skills to open a massive portal and send his weapon into the Earth's outer orbit. Doom then hacks onto every television, computer, and advertising screen around the world. Major cities come to a halt as Doom's face fills, the massive digital billboards hanging from their skyscrapers. Doctor Doom. For too long, the Earth has been governed by small-minded and greedy individuals. You wage wars with one another while your environment crumbles around. You. You support industries that are slowly rotting you from the inside and out. And for most of you, you don't even realize how powerless you are. Nothing more than puppets. To be toyed with. Location, secret military base. United States. Inside a military base the size of a small city, a team of secret international defense, agents have located Dr. Doom's weapon in the outer atmosphere and are locking onto it with their own missiles. Location, New York City, Times Square. 
In Times Square cars are at a standstill. People stand in the street watching the screens, in horror. The secret military base appears on screen. Doom's speech continues as he makes an example of the base that is trying to shoot his weapon out of the sky. The weapon blasts a laser at the base from outer space and destroys the entire base in an instant. Doom reappears on screen and says that his weapon can teleport to any location around the globe instantly. We see the weapon floating in space before it vanishes and then pops up location over the Middle East and destroys another military base. Dr. Doom says that any nation or military that tries to get in the way of his plans will suffer the same consequences and that what they have just seen is only a light refunction of his weapon's power. The screens turn black and people begin to panic. Location, the Great Mound. Vibranium mines Wakanda. The Hulk smashes through a wall into the mine drawing the attention of all the soldiers. And Wakandan people who are e being held in jail like cells in the depths of the mines. Iron Man comes flying in behind Hulk and together they start picking off the soldiers. Thus Hulk goes into full rampage mode, sending soldiers flying into the air, while Iron Man flies through the mines making full use of his arsenal to cause as many robot casualties as possible. Doctor Doom is about to join the fight when he is notified of T'Challa and Shuri's prescience in the kingdom. Doom summons his weapon above Central, Wakanda. Location, Shuri's lab, Central Wakanda. T'Challa and Shuri sneak up on some patrolling robo-guards and take them out before, breaking into her lab. Shuri rushes to her computer and starts typing furiously. The soldiers that they neutralized before have been noticed, and more soldiers are approaching the lab. Shuri finishes typing and a secret chamber opens up to reveal T'Challa's Black Panther suit. The soldiers enter the lab and raise their weapons at Shuri who is still standing by her. Computer. They fire at her, but T'Challa jumps in the way wearing a suit and absorbs the blast and then uses the energy to counterattack the soldiers. Location, the Great Mound, Vibranium Mines, Wakanda. Doctor Doom sets his weapon on Shuri's lab. Iron Man sees this and radio communities with Shuri that they need to get out of there. Immediately. Location, Shuri's lab, Central Wakanda. T'Challa and Shuri sprint out of the lab. Location, outer space. The weapon fires. Location, Central Wakanda. We see the laser beam plunge straight into Central Wakanda, where the lab was, causing a massive explosion and a huge cloud of smoke as parts of the kingdom. Crumble to pieces from the blast, Black Panther's stealth jet erupts out of the smoke cloud and speeds towards the mines. Location, the Great Mound, Vibranium Mines, Wakanda. Doctor Doom turns his attention to the Hulk and fires at him, but his blasters do not even scratch the Hulk's impenetrable skin. Hulk throws Doctor Doom, but he avoids crashing into anything using his flying abilities. Doom flies directly towards Hulk at full speed, while Hulk charges at Doom in the same fashion and collide in an explosion of force and a power. Rebecca and Iron Man go at it in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Like Iron Man, Rebecca can fly and is equipped with blasters and other rockets. The fight is a spectacle of firepower, but Iron Man's skill in combat is too much for the humanoid robot, and he defeats her, blowing her to pieces with a rocket from his shoulder. Doom manages to lasso Hulk with his magic and throws Hulk deep into the earth, smashing him through hundreds of layers of bedrock. Black Panther arrives on the scene and tells Iron Man to help Shuri free the captives while he deals with Doctor Doom. 
Iron Man flies off, and now Black Panther and Doctor Doom face each about 10 meters apart. Doctor Doom tries to use magic at first to contain Black Panther, but his cat-like reflexes dodge the grasp of his spell. Black Panther closes the distance between them, so that Doctor Doom is forced to go hand-to-hand -hand with him in combat. Shuri frees the captives while Iron Man provides cover, taking out any robot soldiers that try to stop them. Doctor Doom is a skilled fighter and the contest is very close. Black Panther absorbs one of Doom's powerful blasters and shoots it back at him. The blast sends the villain smashing into a speeding cargo train passing by that is transporting vibranium from the mine. The train rips Doom's armor to pieces as he ricochets of it and lands on the tracks below. Black Panther jumps down to Doctor Doom, who is lying on the tracks in a heap. T'Challa tells Doom that he has failed and that it's time to answer for his crimes. Doom tries to fly away, but Hulk plucks him out of the air and slams him back down onto the tracks. Iron Man arrives and aims every weapon available in his suit at Doctor Doom. From the mines below the freed Wakandan, people cheer with joy as they witness their true king defeating the enemy. Location: Central Wakanda. Amongst the rubble, there is more celebration as the Wakandans emerge from the mines. Doctor Doom has been confined in a vibranium coffin, preventing him from using any of his magic, and sent off in a ship to a super max prison. T'Challa thanks Iron Man and Hulk for their help, and says that he will never forget their deeds. Iron Man says that they may come a time when he requires the services of the Black Panther in his team of Avengers. Black Panther turns to his people as they chant his name. He raises his fist in the air and shouts, Wakanda forever! Now, what did you think of this alternate scenario? That was a big plot twist. I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, why would you add in Doctor Doom? And it was something that I wanted to add in in this variant MCU world. And with all the stuff going on with Avengers Doomsday, I thought it was the perfect time to finally, you know, shed some light on an alternate version of Victor Von Doom. So again, it's a very interesting what if scenario. What did you guys think of this what if? And would you like to see Mubai? become the Black Panther. But again, do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and turn those notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a fantastic day. Peace out.